plant responses is when plants can respond to light, touch, gravity, and seasonal changes. So these are environmental factors. So when we talk about plant responses, we are saying how do plants respond to certain environmental factors such as light, such as touch, gravity, and seasonal changes. The first one we'll talk about is phototropism. I know you all know what is phototropism because of the fact that there is photo, so it has something to do with the light. So usually you know that if you place a plant like this one here, somewhere near a window, a door, or somewhere where there is light entrance, you know that it is going to grow towards the light. So usually what happens is that uh, we'll be talking about hormones. So we have a hormone called auxin. Okay. So auxins, this is the darker side or the shaded side that does not receive much sunlight. And this is the side that receives much sunlight. So in this case, auxins are going to build up on this shaded, shaded, the side that doesn't receive so much. You can see from here. So auxins hormone are going to accumulate on this side. And auxins, as we shall be seeing, promote growth and elongation. So once they accumulate on this side of the stem, it means that they cause this side of the stem to lengthen. And after it lengthens and the other side is shorter, it will cause the stem to bend towards the light. Then we have vigmotropism. Vigmotropism. This one is a plant's response to touch-like stimuli. Touch-like stimuli. So usually this affects plants that are, are like climbing plants and vines such that if they come across, and that is why some of them, when you're planting them, you have to put, you know, uh, places in which they can stick to or they can climb onto. So usually they will uh, attach onto other plants or any surface that they come across because they have a touch-like response and they will grow or climb, even vines. We also have other plants that grow in the direction of constant wind, so that if wind blows in a certain direction in certain places, then it has the tendency to grow towards uh, that direction of constant wind. So that is digmotropism. And then we have um, gravitropism. And this one is a plant's growth or turning in response to gravity, okay? So gravitropism. So positive gravitropism, of course, will be downward because we know that gravity pulls everything towards the ground. So this is positive. And of course, we have the roots that grow positive towards the soil and the ground, but we have a negative gravitropism where we have the shoots, the shoots grow against the gravity. And that is what we call negative gravitropism. Then we have another response where some plants have rapid responses not involving growth per se. So it's not necessarily a growth response, but it's a response that most of the time is used for protection of plants against predators. And it allows you know, plants to capture food and also to protect themselves from being eaten. For example, you have the Venus fly trap. If you touch this plant, it usually will start closing up. And once it closes up, whatever has touched it, if it's an insect, gets uh, enclosed inside here. So usually when they are touched, water rushes onto the cells in the bases of the leaf, making it to bed inward. Closing, of course, we have put mouth into quotes because it's not necessarily a mouth, but it closes up and gets, you know, uh, whatever has touched inside there. It could be, you know, insects and any other products that can actually serve us food. 
then we have um, photoperiodism is another response. So this is photoperiodism. So it's, it still has something to do with the light, but we are talking about periods, periodism, period. So this is the response to seasonal changes in day length, the length of light, okay? So the length of light can actually determine some of the factors such as flowering in plants and also um, uh, the dormancy of trees and other plants, whether they're able to grow or they will remain in a, in, in a dormant state for long until we have another change in periods. So some of uh, the three plant types we have is that we have long day plants. And these ones require exposure of light for a period exceeding the critical duration to induce flowering. So they need more. If light, for example, right now in Kenya is occurring maybe for 12 hours, these ones will need more than 12. Maybe they need 15, they need 16 and so on. And that we have an example of wheat and pea plants and barley. Now we have short day, they require just less. They can just require, let's say five, five hours of light, four hours of light, seven hours of light, such as cotton, jowa, rice. Then we have other plants that don't mind. Whatever the, the day, the period of daylight really does not affect their growth or their flowering or any other processes in relation to their, uh, into their growth and development. These are cucumbers, roses, and tomatoes. It doesn't really matter. And this is very important when it comes to biotechnology because when you start growing things under greenhouses, when you start doing cultures and you want to grow and manipulate plants in a certain way, then you need to know, are they long day, are they short day, are they neutral? Then we have another term we call vanalization. Okay, some books call it vanalization. It depends on whether it's American or UK English, but either way, S or Z. So this phenomena where there is induction of flowering in plants by exposure to very low temperature. So there are plants that uh, once you expose to very low temperature, then you actually have them flowering. I mean, plants are so diverse. Some of them need low temperature, others need high temperature. It is. So this is a phenomenon of induction of flowering in plants by exposure to low temperature. It prevents precocious reproductive development late in the growing season and enables the plant to have sufficient time to reach maturity. So you can be able to make a plant grow faster and flower faster, then you have reproduction process faster so that it doesn't have to take so long or late into the growing season for it to start having reproduction, okay? So this helps your, you, your plant to reach maturity even faster. So we have biennial plants and these are monocarpic plants that flower and then die in the second season. So in such plants, we have cabbages, we have carrots, we have uh, sugar beets and many other uh, kind of plants. Then we have another response we call plasticity and heterophily. So plasticity is the ability of a plant to follow different pathways and produce different structures in response to environment and phases of life. So they follow different pathways and, dif and produce different structures. This is what is key. I don't know if you have observed the growth of coriander or what we call dania. In, in Kiswahili, usually when they are small, they have very interesting leaf structure. And when they grow, they change. So it is good that you observe, even if it's on YouTube or, or wherever, even cotton. So the, the leaves of the juvenile or the young plant are different in shape from the mature plant. That is what we call plasticity. And then heterophyll is a phenomena of appearance of different forms of leaves. Now this is leaves in particular on the same plant is called heterophyly. So here we are having the same plant, but having different forms of leaves. This one, the same plant, but on this branch has maybe very thin elongated 
uh, the same plant, another branch has wide, you know, wide leaves. So that is heterophyly. And you also find it in cotton and coriander.